Hi, this is Kari from Kari's Crafts. Today we are going to be making a double border, also known as an envelope border, on a piece of overlay mosaic crochet. Um, there are other methods to make the double border. One of the most popular starts out with slip stitches and you work into those slip stitches. Um, the nice thing about that method is it does provide some structure to the, um, the edge of the afghan. But I think this one is just as good that way or close to it. Um, it's enough that I actually prefer it. You don't, um, by doing the um, front post stitches, you don't have to use up the time or the yarn making all the slip stitches. And um, yeah, it's just a little bit faster. Now, when we made our sample piece, we started with a standing single crochet and then we did a chain stitch. The reason for this is it makes it very simple to find our stitches to do the border. Is we're gonna be doing front post stitches about around each of these row ends here. So by doing the chains, it makes it very simple to see those. With some of the other methods, it's a little bit, it's not difficult, but it's a little more difficult to find your stitches. This makes it very simple to do. Now you really can start with either the front side or the back side. Um, most people will say to start with the back, which is what I actually prefer, but you can start with the front if that's your preference. Um, it's a little bit cleaner if you start with the back side. So, um, Essentially what we're going to be doing is making two layers of the border and then um, stitching them together. And what that does is it sandwiches in all these yarn ends. So that way we can eliminate the step of sewing in all those ends because that would kind of be a nightmare. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to start out with a slip stitch. Whoops, as I'm knocking the camera here. Um, we're going to start out with a slip stitch. And you don't need to leave a long end for this one. At uh, When we fasten off, that one we will need to leave a longer end because we will need to um, sew that end in. But this one is going to be incorporated with all the these other yarn tails, so don't worry about leaving a, a long tail there. So we are going to start out with a standing front post single crochet. Um, you could actually slip stitch around here and um, and do it that way, but it's just so much simpler just to do a standing stitch. So we're gonna start on this foundation I cord um, there, and the stitch that would correspond with the other chain, uh, the other chains, it's in line with that. So we're gonna go around front to back to front around here. We're gonna pull up a loop. Goodness. Of course, when I do it on camera, I can't do it correctly. Okay, so there we go. And then finish our stitch. All right, so I'm gonna take this off and show you one more time because that seemed a little fiddly the way I just did it. <laughs> We're gonna do it one more time. Okay, so do the front post stitch. So. We're going to pretend there's a stitch here, so we're going to go front to back to front around that. We're going to or we're going to count this as a post, so we'll pull up a loop. Why is that not wanting to pull? Probably because I had to hook the wrong direction. There we go. Okay, and then pull through our loops. Okay, the rest of them are much simpler. So now we're going to go into this other chain around at the row end. So we'll go front to back to front, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, and pull through two to make the, so that's a front post single crochet. And yes, there is a little gap here, but once you get all your stitches in there, that gap will close. And you do have an option of also doing um, a stand or doing a front post half double crochet if you prefer. I just happen to prefer the single crochet, so um, it's it's up to you how you want to do it. So we will go around the post, pull up a loop, and pull through. And we will do that all the way down the side. 
So front, back, front. Keep going. It's a little bit smoother when I don't have this camera in front of me, but you get the idea. And just make sure that you're not pulling your, um, when you finish your single crochet, make sure you're not pulling your stitches too tight. Oh, I knocked that into, into that again. Um, because you don't want it to all of a sudden curl up on you. So, yeah, just make sure that you don't have too tight a tension there. And some people actually suggest going down a hook size, but I find that um, I use the same size hook that I did for the rest of the um, project, and it works just fine for me. So just kind of check your tension. If it seems like um, you need to adjust... You know, don't be afraid to adjust your hook size. I think the reason I don't is because I tend to make this a little bit tight here. So if you're finding that you're pulling through your post stitches kind of loose, you might need to go down a hook size for this, at least for this first round. We're almost at the end here. These ends kind of get in the way, but after we finish the front, we will be trimming them so they won't be in the way so much. If it helps, you can kind of fold them out of the way. Okay, and then the top row. Okay, so we're around on this last one. Now, when, once we get to this corner here, I went around the top row, we're going to chain two. So one, two. All right, then we'll rotate our piece. So we're going to be working along the top edge. And you notice you've got the two Vs, which already makes your front and the back. So um, we're going to do our front loop for this um, for the back and we'll do this back loop for the front layer so um, we're going to be doing single crochets all the way across here just go into this front loop so whoops didn't pull that there we go so we'll do this all the way across We're going to keep going until we get to the stitch right before that chain on the other end. This is also why I use the same size hook um, as I did for the project because then these stitches are the same size. Almost there.
Okay, so one more. Oh, two more. Wait. I counted wrong. Two more. Sorry. One, two. Okay, so here's our chain here. All right, so we're going to chain two to create the corner. And we're going to turn. And then we're going to do a front post single crochet around that chain. And we're going to continue all the way along the edge like we did for the first side. Goodness, sorry. Keep knocking that camera. I'm going to speed this up so we can get to the end. Okay, a couple more stitches here. Whoops. Almost at the end. And then we'll go around the last one here. And we're going to crochet two chains. Now we're going to go along the bottom here. So it almost looks like garter stitch there, but um, okay. So here you can see the stitches at the bottom. So we're going to go into this one here. I'm going to single crochet into that. I'm going to go all the way across to the beginning. Whoops. Couple more left. One and two. And I'll hold on. Did I miss this stitch? Yep, I gotta do this one too. Okay. Okay, so then we're gonna chain two, and then we are going to do we're going to join to the first 
um, stitch here. Now you can either do um, a slip stitch into that or you can do an invisible join, which is what I'm going to do. You slip your hook out and then in your first stitch you're going to go into there from the back to the front and pick up your loop that was on your hook and pull it through that way and then you don't even see your join. Okay, so that is your first round of the border. So now we're just going to chain one and we are going to single crochet in the back loop all the way across until you get to this chain here, the chain two corner. So I'm going to single crochet across here. We'll go in this first stitch that you joined in. So we're going to do a single crochet in every single stitch. Now if you want to do some pattern stitch for your border, you're more than welcome to. I'm just showing you just a basic solid border, but you know, if you want to add in a pattern, you know, you're more than welcome to. I've seen some actually really beautiful pattern borders, but just for simplicity, we're just going to do a solid border. I need to move this camera up because I keep knocking into it. Okay. So continue on all the way to the end of the row. more yeah, two more okay so now we are at our chain stitches that we did in the um, in the corner now when we do this corner we're going to work into the chains themselves not into this see the space here we're not working into that we're going to work into the chain themselves because if you work into the space that's going to create a gap and then it's possible you're ends that you're tucking in between can slip out there. So um, by going into the chain itself here, that's going to eliminate that problem. So we're going to go into the back loop of the chain or just basically right through the chain and do a single crochet. Then we'll chain two again to create the new corner, turn, and then we will go into the second chain. And that makes a nice sharp corner there also. So now we're just going to single crochet all the way across until we get to the next chain two corner. Again, you could do a pattern if you wanted to. I'm not doing that on this one just because of it's just simpler to show you a solid border. So I'm just doing a single crochet in the back loop. And the reason we do the back loop instead of both loops is because then they're stacked on top of each other. They're because otherwise, if you would go into both, um, then they end up offset, and we don't want that. We want them stacked on top of each other. It's plenty sturdy just doing the back loop. I know this is thrilling watching me do single crochets here. We're almost there. Okay. 
one more okay so now we're at this corner and again instead of going here into in the chain space we're going to go in the chain itself single crochet chain two turn and by turning as you're doing this before you do the second part um or before you do the second chain that makes it so your um your stitches don't end up leaning because otherwise if you would have done that before your stitches would be leaning weird um that way it doesn't do that so it helps create a lot crisper cleaner corner there so all right so now again you're just going to go down this side till you get to this corner i'm going to fast forward that while i do that actually i'm going to go all the way down here do the same thing um, into the corners and then i'm going to go all the way and i will meet you back at the beginning Okay, so I'm at the last corner now. I'm going to go in the first stitch, chain two, and where's my chain? There we go. Go single in the second chain. Now we're back to our first single crochet, and again, you could slip stitch to here if you wanted to. I am actually going to do the invisible join again. So I'm going to drop this loop. Let that be there. I'm going to go from back to front. Put the hook through there. Then I'm going to put this loop back on the hook. And I'm going to pull it right through. And then that creates a nice clean join where you don't have an extra stitch where you're joining. All right, I'm going to do one more round here just because you can see this is now at the height of where my, um, it's well, it's a little bit more. It's about at the height of the end of the piece. So I want to do at least one more just to get that a little bit past there. Um, makes it a little bit better for, or a little bit cleaner for, joining and tucking in all those ends so we'll do one more row so we'll chain one and we'll go back into that first stitch and i'm going to just single crochet across to the corner and then i will go into these chain stitches like i did on the last one and then single crochet, chain, go into the chains again like we did on the last one. So I will meet you up at the beginning of the round. Okay, I'm to the end of the round, which is also, I guess, the beginning of the round. Just have a couple stitches left on this last side. So we go 
one, two, one into the chain. Whoops. One, two, turn and go into this chain. Go into that stitch. That should be the last stitch. Then we are going to do that invisible join again. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do the invisible join. Changed my mind. I'm going to slip stitch here because I'm going to fasten it off. Okay, so I slip stitched into that first single crochet. You oh, knock the camera again. You just um, need to leave a fairly short end because we're not going to be weaving this one in. It's one of the reasons I like doing the double borders. You only have one end to weave in. So this is going to end up getting tucked in. What I usually do is I'll just kind of pull it through down to the back side there and it'll get caught in between here. Now I'm going to flip this over. Before we start on our front border, these should, because we started with a standing single crochet on one end and we fastened it off on the other, it should be pretty um, secure, but just as an extra precaution, I'm going to take these in twos and just do a, a simple overhand knot and do that all the way down. I'll do that off camera, but so you just take it and just tie one over the other and then one over the other again. So just a simple square knot. And then you can take this and trim it pretty short, like just an inch, inch and a half is plenty. You don't need any more than that. And that way it'll tuck in. So yeah, once you've tied these, go ahead and cut these short. do that all the way down this side and then you're going to do it on this side also so I'm going to do that on both sides and then I will meet you back here okay so I've gotten all of these ends tied and trimmed and we are ready to start on the front so now the reason that we did the back first I mentioned that you have a little bit cleaner edge on the front you see here on these row ends you have like this little line that's where the um, the post or the yarn went around the post there so you can start with the front and then you would just see this on the back but it's a little bit cleaner if um, if you have the back first because then you won't see this on the front so what we're gonna do is we will start with a slip knot and again you don't need to leave a long end here when we fasten off we will but here we don't need to leave a long end so we're gonna start around this first um, that I cord row again and there's gonna be a space right here to go front to back to front around that post We'll start that with a standing front post single crochet and that's going to go, you notice it's underneath, see we, there's this line there that's from the other one, we're going to go under that. Whoops, I pulled that too tight so it wouldn't come through. Okay, so we're going to go under this and we will pull that through and do the single. All right, so we're going to do this all along the edge. Under, pull that through, do our single crochet. Now, see, I'll flip this over to the back. See now you can see these the little lines, which isn't really a big deal there, but it just looks a little bit cleaner on the front um, 
not seeing these lines but that also fills in you notice there's still a little gap here where i haven't done these um little threads from doing the um the post stitches fill in that gap so from the front well you'll see once i get more rows in here but you won't see underneath there like you would on the back so we're going to continue down this side until we get to the corner oops And by starting with those chains while I worked the project, it gives me enough space that I can get in and do these post stitches and clearly identify where I need to put my hook. Otherwise, you can do it without doing chains, but um, it just makes it a lot harder to identify where your hook needs to go. getting there keep going on these row ends if it helps whoops push these end things out of the way whoops so it gets in the way okay way to cooperate there yarn okay out of the way whoops it's a little fiddly because I'm holding these strings out of my way here so yarn overs are a little weird okay there we go just a couple more Whoops, get in there. Okay, looks like I have just a couple more here. Also, with having these here, you can tell exactly how many more spaces you need to do. So, there's one. And the last one here. Okay. Now it's easy to cross the top here. So we're going to chain two here to create the corner and we're going to turn and see here's the we're going to go into all these front loops across the top here from this top row. Now I find it simpler. This was the back border. The easiest way to work this row is to just gently fold this down and hold it out of the way while you're working your stitches, excuse me, across the top. So that way, yeah, if you just hold it out of the way, then it's much simpler to get your hook in here. So go all the way across here until I get to that chain. Oops. Okay, a couple more. Let's do 
this out of the way. Actually, it looks like just one more. Okay, one more here, and we're going to chain two and turn this. And we're going to go around this chain here and do a front post stitch here. All right, so then I'm going to continue working front post stitches underneath here and the chains all the way along here. I'll do chain two in the corner and then I will do a single crochet in these loops all the way across the bottom and do a chain two in this corner and I will meet you back right here. Okay, so now we're to the end of the round. Just have two more single crochet stitches to do here on that last edge. So chain two. And then I'm also, also gonna do that invisible join like I did before. Take this standing stitch through there from the back to the front, grab this loop and pull that through and we're going to tighten it just a little bit because I ended up making that kind of big. Okay, so now we're going to do just like we did on the back side. And now it makes it simple just to fold that, all that back stuff out of the way and then the ends and stuff don't get in your way. So, chain a single crochet into this first stitch where we joined it and then we're going to single crochet all the way across to the corner so single in whoops back loop of each of these stitches and again just like the back if you wanted to do a pattern you're more than welcome to I'm just doing a solid one on this. Seeing it? Okay. Okay, so just about at the end here. one more single here now again we are going to go in the corner chain not the corner space we'll go in this chain itself do a single crochet there chain two and we'll go in the second chain whoops just really need the back loop there second chain all right so just like on the back, I'm going to single crochet back loop in all of these to the corner, chain two, and then go all the way down this end, do the chain two for the corner, and then I will meet you up back here. I'm going to single crochet back loop only there. So I'll meet you back right here. Okay, we're back at the beginning of the round. I just have two more single crochets here. One, two, and then we're at the chain corner. Into the first chain, chain two. Go into the second. 
I got a chain. And we're going to do this invisible join again. So we'll drop this loop and we will take the first single crochet here and put our hook from the back to the front through both loops there. We'll grab this loop that we just dropped and we will pull it through there. All right, so that is the second round done. So We'll do one more round. If you wanted to do more rounds, you certainly can. We are just gonna do three rounds because that's what we did for the back. However many rounds you choose to do, just make sure that you do the same number on the back and the front so your stitches line up when you go to um, stitch them together. So, chain, little single crochet into that first stitch. Fold all this other stuff behind me. And then we're going to single crochet in the back loop just like the last round. We're going to go all the way over to the corner. If my hook actually goes in the stitch, that would help. Dang it. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to go all the way across here, and actually you probably don't need to watch me fiddle with this. So just continue single crocheting across this side, do your same corner here, do your single crochet, chain two, single crochet, go across here, corner, across here, corner, and then across to the bottom. Do not fasten off. Join, but do not fasten off um, at the beginning. And I will show you what we do to join the layers once we get back here. Okay, I made it all the way around to the beginning of the round. And I joined this here. Um, all right, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a chain stitch so we get up a, a level. And we are going to match up the stitches. I'm actually pull out this loop so I can get my hook out of the way so I can match these up. Okay, so you're going to want to match up front to back. And it might help if you have a stitch marker, but since I didn't bring stitch markers over here, that could be a problem. Okay, so um, I'm matching up stitch for stitch here. I have the chain. And I've got a stitch and a stitch, and then this is the first one. All right, so I'm going to go into the back loop of the stitch that I'm starting with and the one that's across from it on the other edge, go into the back loop there. So you're going to go through the back loop of both layers. And you can do a slip stitch if you want. I'm going to do a single crochet. So do a single crochet there. All right. The nice thing when you tied these ends off, when you did them in a square knot like that, they usually lay nicely like this. One um, end will go that way. The other end will go this way. Just make sure that those ends are tucked between the layers of your border here. So it helps to kind of pinch together the, push that down and kind of pinch these together as you go. And you might have to keep doing that as you go along. But anyway, so then the next one, we're going to go in the back loop of this next stitch and the back loop of that stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet there. And then we'll do the same thing here. I just want to keep tucking those down there. All right. So we'll go back loop, back loop, and single crochet. In this way, it creates a nice, neat border and you don't have to sew in any yarn ends unless you've done a third color in your 
mosaic project, but that's a whole nother thing. And as much as I still love my graph gans, the one thing I do not miss about doing it this way is all the yarn ends because I would spend a day or two, depending on the size and the com or complexity of the graph, sewing in the, the ends. And there are advantages to that, but I do like the fact that these you just encase it in the border and be done with it. I guess there's pros and cons to both ways because at least the graph gans you can do more colors and whatever but I do like the end thing anyway so you're going to continue this all the way to the corner we're almost there oh this one didn't get tucked in very well go in there there we go Keep going, and if I matched it up correctly at the beginning, which I think I did, then all of our stitches should line up, which is why you want to do the same number of rounds on the front and the back, so your stitches will line up. Because if you don't do the same number of stitches, you're not going to match up. So people have asked me, well, can you do a double crochet stitch instead of doing two rows of your single crochet? Well, yes, you can, but then you have to do the same thing both front and back. In fact, I did um, a blanket for my daughter's boyfriend for his graduation, and I actually alternated single crochet and double crochet in the border, so that way it still had... Um, same number of stitches okay so this is our chain in the corner we're still going to do um, back loop of both of those now you can choose to either do it's up to you if you want to do one chain or two chains in the corner i'm going to actually just do one chain i think in the corner all right do i want to do two i'll just do one for now all right so then this is that second chain Am I going to regret that? Yeah, I want to do two chains. I don't know why I deviate every time I go, oh, I want to. All right. So it's getting a little off camera. Sorry about that. Okay. So then we're going to keep matching it up all the way across here. Top is a little easier because you don't have the ends to tuck in. I'm going to straighten this corner out a little bit. I'll kind of tug it square once I finish them, but kind of do that a little bit. Let's see it. You'll see a tiny gap in there where you had your chains, but it's not real noticeable because you did two chains and then you went into the chain. So it's still filled in the gap there. All right. So Continue going all the way around here. It's a weird angle that I'm doing this at. Oops. All right, so we're going to just keep on going. I'm not going to have you watch me do the whole thing, but we're going to keep going all the way around. Um, do the same thing in this corner we did here. Match up your corners, do um, your chain two, and keep going, and I will meet you at the beginning. Okay, so we're almost back where we started. 
onto this last corner here go through the first chain chain two we will match up these last ones second chain these last two single crochets now when you get to this point if you want to you could slip stitch into the first stitch and fasten off there but i'm going to do um an invisible well it's almost invisible um join here so what i'm going to do is cut my yarn leaving a long tail so i can have that to sew and i'm going to take the tail and pull it through here through the loop there and pull it so it's secure and i'm going to take the end put it through my darning needle All right, so what we're gonna do, it almost creates a duplicate stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a stitch over this one to join. So we're gonna go into this next stitch from the front to the back under both loops. We don't wanna pull it real tight, but we're gonna pull it to, see it's now it has the length of this other stitch, okay? Then we will go into our last stitch here, and I like to go into this, not only the loops, or in between the loops, but into this back, I don't know if that'll focus there. So I'm going to go through the top here, but I'm also going to go through this back part here. And then I'm going to go through the, the stitch that I skipped, okay, so then I'm going to that through whoops as I bumped the camera and you don't want to pull it real tight but see now if you're looking at that and I'll weave in the end you have to look very closely you can see it if you look close enough but right here is where we did our stitch you have to look very very closely to see that that is where it ended so um, that's why I like the invisible join because it makes a nice clean finished edge so then I'll just um, sew in my ends here catch a few of the fibers here I'm just going to go three different directions here and that'll secure that end all right so make sure I catch some of the fibers on the way here go through a few stitches here Oops, almost lost my thread there. Okay. And then we'll go back this way, but make sure you don't go right under that loop or, or it'll pull right out. So go a slightly different path. Just make sure that you catch some of these fibers in there because that'll cause some friction and it won't just pull out. All right. Then I can pull this, and then we can snip this short. And we're all done. So that, and I usually kind of pull the corners a little bit just to make them a little more square. But then you have your finished border. Thanks for watching.